I'm the chair of the Cemetery Commission here in Montpelier, and um, I'd like to just formally welcome you all and thank you all for coming on a, on a rainy day. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order, and um, uh, we're here. I would just like to introduce other commissioners who are here. Dara Ellerson is right here. Mary Nielsen is under the pink umbrella outside the tent. And um, Linda Berger is here on the left behind, uh, just outside the tent. So if you have questions for us, we're here. And um, Patrick is really the, the expert, and I will let him take over at this point. Thanks, Patrick. All righty, thank yep. you, Jake. Yep. So before, uh, to con continue with introductions, that's Carl Griffith, my right-hand man that works down here with me. Um, and the rest of the work crew is from the Department of Corrections. We have a work crew that comes five days a week, May 1st to November 1st, from St. Johnsbury. And they've been doing it since 1981. Um, so, welcome everybody. So today, we're going to talk about what we're, some people may call green burials. We're calling it natural burial. It may be a little bit different. Um, and um, we're not here to sell. We're just here to inform and to get feedback of what people would like in a natural burial section. Um, as you can see behind us, that's the traditional cemetery, row after row, monuments. They're buried either, uh, they're cremations, they're in urns or not in urns, or they're in uh, caskets, which are, which are in concrete boxes. And when you do a concrete box, you can dig right next to it and not have a problem. Um, this is gonna be a little bit different. So everybody should have one of these little what are the differences in comparison to Green Mount's traditional casket burial sheet? Um, I'll go through it. If you've got questions, just ask at any time. Um, so natural burial, the, the definition I'm going to use right now, and it can, all of this can change. Keep that in mind. Um, the definition that I'm using is a full body burial that stimulates natural decomposition. So what are the differences in comparison to Green Mount's traditional casket burials that are like on the other side of the cars? Number one, the, the goal is to decompose the body with very little environmental impact, which means using a biodegradable outer container, which could be a basket such as this. The local funeral home wears and sun brought that down for you to look at. Or a shroud or a natural wood only casket. Number two, the backfill. As you can see, what comes out of the ground is pretty clay. What we're gonna backfill it with is a sand mix. We've got a sample of it here in the bucket. It's gonna be sand, three parts sand, one part compost that we make here. All the leaves from all the trees that we can pick up in the fall, put them over in the corner. We add some horse manure from a local farm make it into compost and we spread it around. Um, so that's what we're going to be putting back in because we want the decomposition process to start as quickly as possible. Also, when we're doing this, when we, in order to make sure we don't ever run into it, run into the burial, because here we can run into a concrete box and it doesn't really bother the person that's digging or the person that's in the box. <laughs> um, we will be putting a four to six inch layer of natural stone ledge on there. So we will always know where the what they call the grave shaft is. So if we start digging and all of a sudden we run into this, we know we're, we're too close. We'll have pins and stuff, but mistakes can happen. And so we want to make sure that we mark all the graves that way. Um, when we're backfilling with sand and compost, there may be some settling that goes on. Um, and so if you were to do a burial today and you come back a couple days later or after the next big rainstorm, you might see it down six inches. It's just the settling and it's something to be aware of. And I think the sand is gonna settle a lot faster than, than the clay. Um, and that's been our experience with a couple that we've tried. Um, so winter burials. We're open all year. Um, and so we're thinking now in order to 
make sure that decomposition process starts as soon as possible, what you will see is you'll see bales of hay. We will cover it, you know, I don't know, eight or ten of them, cover it with a foot of, with, what are they about? Are they a foot wide, Carl? Yes, 14 inches. 14 inches, okay. So that we can keep the ground from freezing. In here in Vermont, the ground hardly freezes. In the winter time, I've, I've done it for 30 years, I can usually get into the grave, dig a grave without any frost. The most problem that I've had with frost is in April when the snow goes and it gets below zero again. So usually the ground is not frozen. The ground freezes though where you plow the snow. So if we don't, if we don't plow it, we can, we can usually dig to it. So that is a concern of many um, for both natural um, burials and casket burials. They want to be able to be buried in the wintertime. In this section, unlike that section there, flat markers only. We're not going to allow big elaborate monuments. If that's what you want, then you will go back to an area um, that is the conventional way. And we, we are looking at doing natural burials there too, but there'll be a little bit of a difference. People have to understand it. Uh, they may or may not be able to do it, depending on where it is in the ground. Um, so uh, one of the problems we're looking at is water. Sometimes in the springtime, we have a lot of water. It's coming off the hill, it's coming out of the sky. What do you do? People have to understand that if we do the natural burial, we will do the best we can to take most of the water out, if not all. But there may be times when part of the body may be in, in some water. Um, it's just to, to understand that. So we're also looking at this grave here is not flat on the bottom. It's not level. It's level with the ground. So all the water would have, uh, you can take a look at it once I get out of your way. All the water would just come down to the foot anyways. So that's something to to think about. The grave size, we're not quite sure on the size of the grave. Right now, and I call it cheek to cheek, conventional burials, cheek to cheek, you can get three and a half feet. Why? We're probably talking six or eight feet wide. We just have to figure it out because what we want to make sure is that if we dig next to this one here, for instance, how close can we get without that wall falling in? Because if it's not a family member, I don't want to, I want to make sure we stay separate. It's just, that's what my mind is thinking right now. So, so if you have a family member, you could put them closer? Away? Yes, if it's a family member and they liked each other, yes. <laughs> we will make sure, you know, we'll be touching. Okay. If you don't like each other, then you go back to the regular, <laughs> the regular rule. But we could do that. Between them. <laughs> and so that's the other thing we're trying to figure out is how do we design this section? Single graves, two graves, four graves. We're, we're still, it's all new to us because of that issue of how close do we want to be. Um, see, grave size, okay. All right, so lar lots larger than two graves will need to be properly located in this section. What I mean by a section is you, once you're on grass, you don't cross the road. So this kind of a kidney shaped section, this would um, last a long time, I think, for just natural burials. And this is what we're looking at here. Um, so, upkeep of the area. We're not gonna mow the lawn. The only thing that would be mowed is probably four to six foot strip right around the road. Everything else will be left to grow up. We will plant <coughs> pollinators. We will plant uh, trees and shrubs. We'll try to figure out a design and it may be uh, a progression type of thing where as we're moving along with burials, then we can put a tree in. And then we're not going to worry about killing the tree if we have to dig next to it. Um, we're also going to... Um, okay, so it'll be wildflowers. We're going to bush hog it or mow it once a year. In the fall, we would come through, clean it all up for the winter, and then let it come back up in the springtime. We, we want it to look a little wild but not not too much um 
So the landscaping, it'll, it'll include pollinators, trees, shrubs, wildflowers, grasses, whatever people want, whatever we want, it's going to be an experiment. So what we're gonna be looking at next year is a lot of this may end up going into a cover crop of like oats, peas, and um, vetch, just to get the soil a little bit more enriched. And then other parts will be wildflower. It's gonna be an experiment at first, just so we can figure figure out how it's gonna work. Um, and uh, Question yes. On, um, not mowing all year, so say in July or August, if you wanted to come and visit a grave, would you be able to find it? Yeah, so you're gonna have a marker. Okay. Um, and so yeah, you would just, you, you would- you Just would wander through the grass. And wander through and find it. Um, you, you, yeah, it wouldn't be a problem. Now, the, the flat markers are going to be mandatory. You're not going to be able to not mark the grave. We want to make sure every, everyone's life is worth remembering, and it's got to be in stone. we got to know where it is, so when we're maintaining it, we know that there's something there. Um, it, it doesn't have to be um, within the parameters of that. You could use different types of stone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as it's flat, you can, you know, somewhat flat. If you've got a different idea, we may change it. If we we can place it in an area, but we really don't want a lot of upright because once you start going upright, then they're going to want um, monuments to come in. And so we got to figure this out. There may be maybe there's a section that we have a few uprights, but for maintenance, we got to fit, you know, and so that's why I need people's input. And it's, you know, we're going to just make this work as we go along. Um, yes. I make a suggestion, which is, I think some of us might like the idea of planting a specific plant on the on the site as part of like the natural burial thing. Yep. You know that you could plant. Say, I want to pick out this kind of a bush, and yep. But if it gets mowed every year, then well, well they could it, mow around that. Yeah. Oh. So we're we're like I was saying, we're going to be having trees. Some people are they're going to want a tree planted. If they want it on them, that's fine. But once I once we figure out the plan. We'll know where the lots are, where they can have a tree or a shrub or, or something. But we have to keep it somewhat uniform, somewhat looking nice compared to, yeah. you know, the rest of the of the cemetery. Can I ask a question? Yes. I was, I'm sorry that I was late. I was no. in the cemetery, but okay, that's all right. <laughs> For 15 minutes. Um, and did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, I was amazed at what I saw. Yeah. Some beautiful, beautiful gravestones on the back side. Yeah. Um, what is the length of time that it takes for the body to decay? I am not sure on that. Um, because I'm wondering if this site can be reused or something near it. Or... No, we're not. We are not in in the mind frame of reusing that site. Once the body goes there, that what you would reuse it for would be a tree or a shrub or something. But we're not going to. Yeah, that would. And that's another reason why we're using a sand mix versus clay. We want the body to really decompose. And they have issues in Germany, from what I read, and I just got a, some um, academic papers from like academic.com today about um, burials and how they uh, decompose. So I haven't, I haven't had a chance to, to read through them. But there's a lot of research going on on that part. But I don't, I don't, see a Vermonter wanting to know that their land could be reused for something else or somebody else um, but maybe it'll it'll change in time um, so talking about that we are reinternment which is digging up the body it may be impossible to perform people have to understand that we do one every three or five years where they want to take mom and move her to California we do that, but in this situation, it, it's going to be tough. And it, but if it's something that somebody wants. It would be very, um, it'll be very costly um, because it's just it, cheaper to move here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so as far as pricing, we're still reviewing it. We haven't figured it all out yet because of all these little things. We're trying to. Um, just get input right now um so how did we know that this was a good section not a good section you're going to see dirt circles throughout this area we had someone come through with their ground penetrating radar machine looks like a little lawnmower has the laptop up top here it's printing out showing all the bumps and stuff 
and he went through and said, okay, this is the depth that you can, and it looks like we, most of this area we can dig down to the depth. Now, when we're talking depth, that's one of the changes, the differences we're going to have. Green burials, you know, they can go three and a half feet deep now in Vermont. We're looking at just four feet. While it's only six inches more, we want to make sure that there's no issues with um, animals digging up. Um, I really need to see some place that has weather conditions like Vermont, soil conditions like we have, that have that has done this at three and a half feet. Um, while six inches may not be enough, in my mind, I, I, I don't know what we would do if case something dug it up. We just want to make sure. It's, like I said, we're going to be, um, it's going to be progressing as we move along, and we may end up going to the three and a half feet if we find that it works. Well, no, I don't believe so. If you go five feet, I don't believe you'll have it. So that's why we want to make sure the sand is there. We want to make sure the compost is there. I don't know if there's any other microbes that we can add to the ground to get things going, but we do want to, we want to heat that. Uh, it's making compost. And so we want to heat that up and we want to make it, we want to do it right. We don't want to go halfway and then have it stop. Yeah. And so it, this is an experiment and in Vermont, Soil temperatures, when you get, you know, too deep, it's, it's never, it may not be high enough for, right. um, you know. So will you be doing little test holes or something to see how it goes? We're not going to do test holes, but there is testing going on around. Um, so and we we'll just pay attention. And we just hope that what we're doing is, we're never going to disturb it, so. Right. Then how will we pay attention to it? We will pay attention to the results of these tests. No, no, no. There, there's, um, there's other people around the world. There, there, there's actually body farms around, and they usually do it for forensics. And they'll leave the body on the ground, then they can see how long it takes for the bugs and stuff to start. But the, um, what is Lee's last name? Lee Webster, who's, who, is a, uh, who has written some books on green burials. She told me that they're doing some experiments and some research on decomposition because that is a, a main question. How will it work in the north? If this was out west, you know, and the ground was really hot, then I wouldn't have a problem. But being as cold as it gets here, that's, that's the concern that I have. Yes? I'm assuming um, that there's no possibility of interspersing the natural barrier pots um, or locating them in any other place. Okay, so Deborah was asking, can you make natural burial spots in other locations of the cemetery? We have to look at that. We may, we're, we're starting to do a little bit of that in some of the sections where somebody wants a monument. Um, but this is going to be the main area for right now. Um, there is a square mile behind us that's undeveloped and we would love to be able to um, purchase it someday, but that's, that's someday, that's not today. Um, other questions, concerns that people might have? Yes? To get the four foot depth, can you build up? Like, instead of digging a hole. Instead of digging four feet or down, or you know, maybe dig two feet down and build a mound <clears throat> two and a half feet up. Oh. Um, that could be a possibility, but we're, I'm, I'm really trying to focus on, on the maintenance. I'm trying to look how, that, how would we maintain that down the road. We have a mound there. The problem with mounds is settling. Um, I don't think it'll work. Um, in my mind, I, think, well, I want to be able to come through here in the fall, clean everything up. You know, it's like you're making your bed for the first time in two months. You make your bed, looks great, and then then it goes the messy. That's how I am. So but ideally, you like a level grade, like no mound. No. no. Oh, you mean yes, a level finish grade. Yes. Yeah, is Linda. There with the I mean, if you maintain a mound, is there runoff on this hill? There's there. Well, in the spring, yeah, there will be runoff on any hill in in Vermont. So yes. Yeah, so we we have to make sure that maybe we can go a little mound up 
Um, again, we're just got to figure this out. The, the, we've done two experimental ones in the cemetery, and um, both times they're they're flat and they're they're being mowed. Um, so that's what we're used to. So that's a good question because it really didn't enter. There's so much, uh, so many parts of the logistics to this that we're we got to just keep researching it all and looking at all of it to make sure that we do it right. We want to make sure that it's a, a proper decomposition of the body and that it's marked. Yes. Oh yeah, we go and we fill it in. We pay attention to it. And, yep. Oh yeah. yeah. And that will be another, you know, when we go to mow in the fall, we'll see where the depressions are. Or in the spring after the snow melts, that's probably the time we'll go through, fill it in, reseed it with whatever, and just to try to make things nice. Because what will happen is if you have a depression, it will collect water. So if you've got a rainy season, too much water in a compost doesn't work. See, we got to try to figure out this balance. I don't know if anyone's ever made compost, but there's a balance between moisture and, and uh, um, the dryness and, and the materials that are in it. So you have to, because if it's too wet, it, it stinks. So, yes. Being forward in this movement and giving, creating this option that is being a better steward of the land. Um, Thank you. We, yeah. We've had a lot of input um, over the years from different people, um, and so it's like cremation. I started here 30 years ago. Cremation, we would we do maybe 40 burials or so a year. We were doing one cremation. That was brand new. Now that took off and now we're over 70% cremation. But now we're looking at this other option. So what Green Mount likes to have are options. We don't want to say that you have to have Berry Gray Granite Monument upright. We, and you have to buy two graves. You can buy one grave and have an upright, just a smaller one. So that's what we're trying to look at is all kinds of options, individual spots for people um, for their, the burial of their loved ones. Um, work done on this, but are there other um, green plots in Vermont? I think there might be one in southern Vermont. I, th I believe Callis has one now, uh, maybe in the Robinson Cemetery. Um, there's a, a movement over towards Burlington area that's trying to look at it. But a lot of it is the logistics. Um, a lot of cemeteries in Vermont the people that work there are part-time. They, they're not, they don't have a full-time job like I do. They're small cemeteries. And they may um, have a, a different, uh, they sub out their mowing, okay? They may sub out their digging, they, you know? So there's nobody that really oversees the cemetery itself for the cemetery. So that's, you know, but it's coming. How big will it be? I don't know. I was told when I started to embrace cremation, because it's coming hard, so we're just gonna follow the same thing with this idea. We're gonna embrace it, and let's see where it brings. And what we're seeing is, or what I'm seeing, just talking to a few folks, is that people that were being cremated may wanna do this instead. And so we're, we just gotta see, we just want options. Yes? The greatest cost to the uh, the greatest cost. I'm gonna kind of duck that answer and say the greatest cost is maintenance of a cemetery. And so, as we get bigger, as as people change their mind in maintenance, that's where the cost is gonna be. So, when I started um, 30 some odd years ago, weed whackers, weed trimmers. They were a thing, but they weren't a thing. Then they became the thing. If your lawn on Main Street or Liberty Street wasn't perfectly trimmed, your, your neighbor would say something. And I grew up on Liberty Street and we were using... Now, where, what happens to those hand clippers? They, were, they stayed in the barn and they stayed there because we didn't. And so everybody expected the place to look like a golf course, okay, but they weren't all paying $2,000 a year to, to come here. They, so it's the maintenance of the cemetery. So. When this first started, the cemetery, in 1852, there was no lawnmowers. 
The monuments down there in the old section are big. Their family name were, was usually right about this height. Why? Because when the hay grew, you could still see the family name. Then as things changed, you know, because they, they were smart enough to know that if we were going to be pushing lawnmowers on these hills, they would have picked a spot that was level, but they didn't. So we would like to get back to, you know, we let the, we grow, we let the grass go long. As long as we can have it even looking, people drive by, they, oh yeah, cemetery looks good. It's when it's not even that they get upset. Ever uh, think about yes. things, but um, sheep and goats to uh, it's, it, it could work. I would love to because they work 24 hours a day. And um, But again, maybe someday it could be. Well, you know, and that might be that, that might be a situation where we could experiment that where the uh, someone brings down goats or sheep. But the problem with um, we got to make sure that they're not going to be eating the trees and the shrubs that are in there. There's always a, and we have enough deer that come down um, that will nibble on a lot of stuff. So, yeah, the hostas, <laughs> pure green hostas they like. Some of the hostas that are blue green or that have a, a white margin around them, they don't touch. Uh, we got an example down front. You know, someone was complaining the other day that their hostas get eaten all the time, and the woman's hostas next to her don't. So, but they're different kinds. Yes. In that section, yes. So, um, for instance, if we were to buy 25 acres in the woods, okay, maintenance would be way down. We have a section up called Woodland Gardens up in the back, which is woodland just for cremation. We hardly do anything in there. We have some paths we'll go through. We, we'll, we'll put some wood chips down on the paths and that's it. Um, so yes, natural burials could someday um, if they're all flat markers. What we're worried about are the, uh, the works of art made out of granite that a tree could come down on. we're really collectively supporting the maintenance of the entire cemetery. Yes, yes. You know, there's perpetual care fund. Um, and, you know, our perpetual care fund, it's public, um, it's public information. It's a public fund. Um, is it almost, uh, is it almost, where's Jake? Oh, is it like $900,000, 950000 Is it up to that now? Do you know, Mary? Uh, Jake would know. Uh, but anyways, to run this place, we need more like two and a half million to be able to take the interest off to maintain the cemetery because there are state laws on how you can invest it as far as you can't go 100% stock. You can only go up to 60% stock. The rest is bonds and really safe because it's got to just keep growing. Um, and so uh, if you know of anybody that would like to make a donation to the community, we would be glad to, to help them out. Um, but that's the big, you know, maintenance is the big cost, you know? Um, and, and when it's on a hillside, it's even more. And because of winter time, people want to be able to get up here in the winter time. So this road is usually open. It may be three or four days after a snowstorm, but you can usually get up here, you know, most of the winter. Um, and if we're gonna have natural burials up here, um, would definitely have it open, but a lot of people do want to be able to come to their site in the winter time. Other questions, concern? Ask anything because this is all new to me, and I just I'm trying to look at every little, every little spot, um, and how we're going to design it. Sure, sure. If John wants to. Well, uh, talk about the basket. What we have here is a, is a bamboo wicker basket. It's one of many options, but we basically came up with three different packages and priced them out and how that goes. And 
It starts with if, if a family member dies and the family wants to produce their own casket, it's, it's X, X amount of dollars, and it steps up to a natural uh, linen cloth shroud. And then the next step is, a, is an unfinished pine box, and then it finishes with this here. Okay, those essentially are three options. As many, it, this, this particular company makes many different styles of this, but this is pretty affordable, and I think it looks great. And, and this is what we've kind of landed on for now. And can we see the inside of it? You sure can. It just takes a moment to undo it. Do um, just uh, about 850,000. Oh, yeah, yeah. The climb is, is kind of uncomfortable. I don't think it's. Uh, I understand that. I understand that. Is that made out of bamboo, did you say? It is made yes. of bamboo. Which uh, would also decompose. Yes, yes. So the, the idea is that. This container is going to break down roughly at the same rate as the body, so it's not coming in between the body and that natural right. process of decomposition that happens underneath the soil. And there's one more here? No, we've got that. Yeah. So I guess it's oh, a strap here. Oh, right. well, we tied the handles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You can have your you can have your own you can step right in. You can lie you can try in. Try it out. Try it out. <laughs> Would you just go through the those options again? Yeah. From from the one that you think is So the most affordable from that okay. standpoint would be if you hire you know hire our services. Um, so that, that's basically taking care of the logistics of all of this. It may sound simple, we're just going to the cream we're just going to the cemetery. There's logistics, it takes time. Sure. How are we gonna how are we going to care for the remains in that period of time? And I'm going to actually talk about that in a moment. Um, and so, so if you just hire our services, but you like, so let's say there was someone's crafty wanted to build their own container, by all means, by all means, it would have to meet certain standards. And me and Pat are going to talk a little about that uh, amongst ourselves to come up with standards for that. Um, I.e., no finishes, no harsh glues, those kind of things. Um, and then the, then the next step is, is a burial shroud. And I kind of wish I had brought it today, but a burial shroud is, is linen. Uh, what's interesting is on the, on the underside of that has these slats, okay? Because if you can imagine lowering somebody into a grave in a shroud, you know, you're gonna have the, the, the hammocking effect. So these slats kind of help with that. And then there's actually incorporated uh, strapping within this. So, we, so potentially four people could, could lower right into the, right into the ground. Then it steps up to uh, an unfinished pine pine casket. There's no lining to it. It's very very. Uh, um, it's, it's it's a six sided box, mm -hmm. you know, and then it finally kind of ends up on something like this. So that that's looking at it from a financial, from a cost basis. Mostly, yeah. So looking at it from a uh, decomposing basis. Well, I would dare say. I would dare say, I don't know. I, you know, those questions are hard. We're not, we're not scientists right, in that. Hold you to it. But, uh, <laughs> but I would dare say that probably the shroud would probably be the, from a decomposition uh, and point of view. This. And then, and then perhaps this, and then maybe the pine box. Uh, uh, yeah. The, the less you put between your body and the soil, the more the interaction between your boil, your body and the right, soil. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so as far as. Uh, Preservation. So, so, right, there's a time period between when somebody dies and when we can get Pat to come up here, clean this up, dig the grave. Let's say, well, let's say two days is, is probably going to be average. So, what we're waiting for, two days. So, and that's average. Now, now, a couple variables there would be doctors. Doctors get the death certificate signed. There. It happens on a weekend. Doctors just don't sign death certificates. It's just how it is. And then, um, um, we would apply for some permits. Pat's going to need some time to plow this out potentially, dig the grave. So what happens to the remains? And so we we're actually going to use refrigeration because there's no embalming, and that that, would, that is not not uh, conducive to what we're talking about here. And we so can provide refrigeration at the funeral. At the funeral, that's right. Is there a time limit then to that? I mean, if not necessarily. So that that's the best answer. Is depends. Most often, no. Uh, like. I've had people in our refrigerator for uh, for weeks. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you don't have to resort to the freezer. Yeah. Uh, so we don't have a freezer. Okay. Uh, so we sort of have a freezer down front, which is our vault, which is not heated or not cooled. In so the in the winter, winter time, time. In the winter time, that's definitely a potential um, to use that, and it does freeze. But again, there may be some extras that if um, when you, one of the issues that we 
excuse me for interrupting, that we run into is that somebody wants to be buried within so much time. And then all of a sudden, Uncle Frank is in Italy, and Uncle Frank's got to be there. And so we're here running around, getting everything ready, and then, then I get the call, don't worry about it for another week, because, you know, our uncle is in Italy, and he can't make it. Can't get out of the so you got, those are the little things that can really mess things up. Um, and so you got to be aware of that. Um, and just by, and I'm glad he brought this down because this is so, this is so new to us. We, Carl and I didn't know how wide this was. So this is like two feet. Um, we're digging that hole there at 40 inches wide to accompany a, um, a vault, a concrete box. So that's why we have to, all these little logistics, um, we'll now know how wide we can make the actual grave. Oh, I don't eight, seven feet. Usually they're in inches. Well, ninety-six is what we dig, but this one's seventy-eight. So if we were to dig, you know, so that's that, we'll probably dig the same length. We want plenty of sand and compost around it. So what if you decided you want this kind of a burial, and you say you die in California? What happens? Yeah. So that's so. Good question. Good question, right? So there's logistics there, and, and we just have to figure it out. So I mean, to is ship that a somebody, can you? Yes. It, it is yes. a possibility, but it's really going to be case by case. And, yeah. and if you're interested in this type of area, you also have to consider the carbon footprint of, of shipping somebody across the country. Right. There are places you can have green burials in California. Yeah. So, you know, that would be something where you'd need to talk, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and that's something that we can help people sort through what, what's really going to be the best. So yeah, it's so just, interestingly, we used to have a, the, the air, all airlines kind of follow the same rule that in order to ship human remains on a on a carrier like that, you have to. We'd actually have a, a certificate of embalming we'd have to present, oh. and that's no longer the case. Oh. They actually use dry ice now, and, and uh, so I got to actually. I'm, I'm not. We don't do a lot of shipping for whatever reason, yeah. and thankfully, because it's all in the bottom. So um, we just don't do a lot of that. I have to do a little research and exactly ins and outs on shipping someone. You know, um, normally, how do people get to your funeral home from the hospital or wherever? We, we go. You go and you have a truck. A truck we truck. van. We have a hearse, but most of the primary van. Primary van. So if you get shipped out from California, you'll be going into Boston. And then right. John goes down to Boston to pick you up. So they used to sh they used to fly into Burlington. That was great. We zoom up there, oh, zoom yeah. back, so all the way to Boston, all the way back. Oh, it's yeah. a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. But so in that scenario, if you already chose. Or purchased a plot here mm -hmm. and died somewhere else, and then ended up being cremated. Could you still have your ashes? That's a great question. Here? Have your what? Your ashes. Oh you know, sure. If you were okay. too far away. And, yeah yeah. And oh yeah. And sure. And, and interesting, there are natural pipe urns that's certainly available, and that can get. That's a pretty something could be accomplished. Now, what about just we? we currently, we can bury just the ashes, correct? Right, the cremated remains um, Could go in this can go in the ground without an urn. We okay. don't, we're not one that requires a outer container around the urn, like concrete vault, but it's right. for cremation. Right. Many cemeteries do that because guess who sells the concrete vault <laughs> for cremation? The so, cemetery does. Yeah. So speaking of that, getting back to the spirit of all this, right, in cremation, so first is a huge carbon footprint there, right? We're burning fossil fuels. I think I, I asked a fellow the other day, and, and it, it's around 15 gallons of propane each cycle. Uh, so there's that. The other thing to know is once cremated remains, uh, you know, processed and in the urn, the pH of that is approximately 11. 11 yeah. So the pH is super high on that. Yeah. So very acidic. Um, those are things to consider. This is. We're speaking of the spirit of right. conservation and, and, and stewards of our land. Free on yeah. top of it, you're, you've got carbon sequestration. Well, yeah. I, from what I've read, the trick with if you're interring cremated remains in a natural grave is you've got to create a compost mix, mm -hmm. and you've got to precisely you've got to balance out that acidity that, with other materials, that's so that what's going into the ground isn't going to be this hot spot, hot spot. of that's exactly. acidic mm -hmm. material. Yeah. It's going to then because it'll kill your tree <laughs> if you have a tree planted above it. You <laughs> should really kind of ask somebody about it. What is yeah. the cycle? So per, per cremation, like oh, so, okay. one person gets cremated, that's the cycle. Oh, cycle. Per, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that's that's propane, and you know, there's other fuels that, depending on the, the retorts that they have, they use it. And 
um, natural gas and other options. Some people use, uh, some places use, uh, but the propane uh, is kind of from the primary fuel. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Pat, you mentioned that there might be the possibility in the future of some forest area mm -hmm. for natural burials as well. <coughs> That's what our that's hope. That's our hope, yeah, but right. I've been hoping that for 20 years. So, <laughs> <laughs> because I, from what I've read, forest impermanence decompose quicker because there's a lot more soil activity and stuff than there is on the lawn. Um, and I'm, and I'm so, we to know that you're thinking in terms of planning definitely pollinator. Yeah. We would like, you stuff. know, so, and this is just thinking out loud. Out loud. So what if we, we had? Close this up. We'll oh, yeah. some shelling up there. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like to get on the ground. Yeah. We want it to be well, nice. We can, we can do it like we can do it offset it too. Yeah, we no. can. So here. Yeah. Kind of like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> could we plant a forest on top of it? Could be an apple orchard. It could be. Could we do that? We could. Um, and maybe that's what we should be looking at. Um, but when you're in the woods. Um, you're going to use a lot more land because you've already got the trees there. I'd rather see it, you know, yeah, this yeah. as the foundation, then put the trees on. Right. So that may be, you know, I, I've been sketching out things, and I said, oh, maybe we'll have a little corner apple section, and maybe a little corner, you know, pears. I mean, I like, you know, I like food, yeah. <laughs> and so, and the deer do, the deer and the turkey. So you know, we got to, you know, keep everybody fed um, so exactly. you know but that that's a good point and if that gets to the you know if we do that then we're not going to go through and um, bush hog everything the trees would be there and that it that might be a great thing to try um, I just got to hear what people are are thinking about and um, I like the apple orchard idea yeah. okay yeah. plums plums yeah okay. Okay. Climate change, more food trees in the world here. Peaches. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pineapple. A vineyard. A vineyard. A wow, we could. A vineyard, and then you there you go. Oh, oh, there's oh, your oh, fun. There's oh, your oh, fun. Oh, oh, grandma's right wine. There. Hey, grandpa's wine. Okay. There you go. Wow. All right. You just solved your financial problem. Okay. Yeah. The, the it's going to be a vineyard up here. Climate change. Soon you'll be able to grow Pinot Noir. Oh like right! We would be on the we would be on the bus tour for the wine stops. You, thank you. We got something going here. Yes. Right. Well, that's you know, and that's that's your slogan right there. That's why we went ahead about um, 30 years ago, put in uh, black walnut trees down front, because we were taking out all these trees that we weren't getting any money. We were paying. And now when those black walnuts come out, hopefully we'll be able to get some money back, um, you know. And so we're, it's like, yeah, good, great. Yeah, outside the box of wine. Good yes. <laughs> outside the grave box, right? No, just outside the box. Okay. So you box just, wine, and then outside, outside the box. Wine. <laughs> so I just want to say, I've been around in this business, I've been doing this since 16, but I've been around the long enough to see the evolution from a traditional burial, and it kind of all leans to, cremation now and and i'm excited to <coughs> usher this in this this is a real good thing and, and and i'm excited about it and michelle and pat and this is this is a great opportunity for everybody and, and i just think this is wonderful i'm really excited about this yeah yeah, yeah. so thank you, thank you. Thank thank you. Yeah. Thing is on the 20 i'm sorry on the 28th of september we're going to talk a little bit more of what we do on the, on the side of things and uh so hopefully if you're right we'll be there that'd be one o'clock i think and, and, uh, and in particular, the number one question, how much? And, and we're going to go over all that. It's going to be at, uh, at, at, at our funeral. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. the number one question, how much? How much does it cost? And then so we're going to talk about all that. And, and then we'll have this, uh, a pine, but the three examples that I said, we'll have all those presented. And, um, and what, what families need to make decisions it'll cost about more or less than uh, cremation? Way less. About, uh, cremation? It's gonna yeah. be uh, cremation is definitely going to be more. Definitely more than cremation. but. As far as a traditional burial, about half, if not even more than that. <laughs> so before you leave, just make sure that we have your name and address so that when we have other things that come up, we may also do a, a team um, meeting at the senior center. So um, just make sure you get your, your contact name and number or email for us so that we can let you know what's 
what's happening and and throw the ideas out at us because what we uh, what I've always done and the commissioners have supported it is we want everyone to have an individual burial down here they don't we don't want people to be told what to do we don't want people to be told they have to have a great big monument with their big family name on it if they want something flat something small great we're not we're not going to discriminate we're not going to advocate any which way yes when are you having when is the first, when are you, you're talking about oh. thinking it out? When is this going to be ready for sale? So, in order for us to sell something, we have to have it surveyed and the plot plan um, given and uh, recorded at City Hall. So, it will be this fall. We are, we just had the ground radar. We've got the surveyor. Once we bury the surveyor's brother today at, at uh, 1130 uh, or 11, he's going to come in, survey things. And now that I've gotten some ideas of what people may be looking for, I can start designing that section and say, we, you know, possible orchard section, you know, whatever. And uh, we'll go for it from there. But it will be this fall. We'll be ready to. Now, um, if somebody was to die and they needed to be a green burial, I mean a natural burial here, um, we could probably figure something out. As long as I'm not selling you that actual lot yet before it gets surveyed, then the state probably, and there's really no cemetery police anyways, but we do, <laughs> we do want to pay attention to what the, what the law says. Yes. Would you just comment about, I know you're very clear that you want to use the word natural burial instead yeah. of green burial. Would you just um, explain a little bit about why that is? Um, why so it's kind of like, uh, it's, it's in my mind, um, green burials, there are standards. So you can be certified by the Green Burial Council as strictly green. It's a lot like me when people say organic. What is an organic vegetable when you have used diesel tractors to grow all of it? You can say it was grown with organic methods and we can do burial. Uh, so this is my version of that was saying we're going to call it natural burials because we don't want someone to come down and say, oh, that's green and green means this. Like, uh, no. I like it. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Is part of that the different discrepancy between the depth? I think it's the depth. I think it's also, um, you know, we had took a bulldozer to this piece of land to make a, a level, somewhat level area. So I, I don't know all of their. Yeah. So, uh, so, like, from a funeral home standpoint, we could approach the Green Burial Council and get green certified and say, what it comes down to is a blessing. Well, you pay me money and we'll bless you and then you're good to go. And, and, and well, you got a certain mean standards. I don't want to say it like that, but, but you pay perhaps you're that. I don't even know. I don't even want to go down that road because it's sort of nonsense. You know, you just, just for that certification, I'm not really interested in, in grabbing that at this point. Uh, perhaps maybe down the road I'll change my mind, but that this, as it stands now, I'm not looking to get certified for that. Uh, for exactly that reason. I think we can do the same thing without paying anybody to say so. Okay. Patrick, if people want to, are thinking and want to send you some more thoughts that they have, do, is there a link to your email? Before? Yeah, is there on that t sheet there? Is that my address up there? Yeah, cemetery at Montpelier dash VT. Oh, yeah. Great. Thank you. If anybody needs a sheet, I have access to it. Can I add? I, yes. I, in the front porch forum, I searched the archive for cemetery, and there was a posting from the Callis Commission, and um, a link to their town. And there's a really interesting two-page paper on how they're doing uh, green burials. That was really just helpful, descriptive, like what the person needs to know ahead of time. Um, and that. I think they're maybe the closest local example. And that's something that we can help families with. That's part of what we're here for, to serve families, because there's a lot that you need to think about ahead of time. So certainly, that's something that we can offer to families, including keeping the casket dry in place, right? <laughs> So Michelle, I don't know if everybody, I have your card, but I don't know if other people know how to get in touch with you. So I work for, for Guerin and Sons. Oh, so okay. Right. All right. Yeah. Okay, great.
All righty, feel Thank free to so ask much. questions. And if you have any cemetery questions, even if it's a cemetery out, out Side to here. Just ask me. I don't mind helping. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Thank you, guys.